Hey guys, what's going on? Adam here with Indy Farm Life. Got another project for you guys today. Chris and I are putting in some steel gate posts for some big gates we have that his parents bought at an auction a while back. Uh, you can see behind me the backhoe sitting here. We dug the holes yesterday, didn't film any of that, wasn't that much to see. We were kind of navigating between electrical lines, utility lines um, for the internet, and then a sewer line as well. So I'll show you guys the holes and then we can take a peek at the gate posts we have and then the gates themselves. When this is all said and done, these things are going to be stout. Um, we're thinking we're probably going to need in the neighborhood of about six yards of concrete to fill both holes. And then uh, we're going to do a rebar cage down inside it as well. So today we're going to show you guys how to set some gate posts that are going to outlive your grandchildren. So that there is the second hole that we dug. Uh, we used the backhoe to cut maybe the first two feet off of it or so. And then had to hand dig beyond that so we didn't get into the electrical line. We actually have not found the electrical line on this, this side here. So we think it's where this red flag is, which what you would think, but um, when they marked it, they also had a red flag out there. So who knows what they were really marking when they did that. So that's hole number two, and over here is hole number one. It's it's cavernous, almost like the pond. Um, gotta clean that hole out a little bit though, and then we'll be ready to set our posts. Grab my coffee here and walk up to the barn, see what Chris is doing. Went to Home Depot, got some more materials. Had some stuff laying around, but just needed a few more items. My truck always looks like I'm a general contractor. I'm actually not. So there are the posts we had made. I had them custom fabricated for us. Uh, custom, I mean, they're six by six, 12 foot long posts, and they had these pieces of angle iron welded on them, welded to them. And then Chris just uh, painted them black so that with the oil-based paint so we can avoid corrosion. We set them down in the hole, but 12 foot, six by six, which will support those big boys. Those 300 pounds each? Uh, yes. 300 pounds per gate. Basically trying to keep the riffraff out of the farm. I think we have both holes cleaned out pretty well. Chris just ran up with a 4105 to grab a bucket of gravel for the bottom here. There's my gravel man. Got a little gravel there in the holes. And uh, Chris is bringing the post down here now. I think you guys will appreciate how we move these posts. You can't see, that's a 12 foot post coming right at me. How's the handle? Like a Cadillac, I bet. We're doing our best to see if we can't get every piece of equipment out here to do this small job. I'll bring the golf cart back. Okay. <laughs> Good luck getting down there. <laughs> Come on me, I'll be here hand, okay. holding this pole. All right. Pretty much balanced, but I'm going to act like it's a big deal. I think you're supposed to clean this up. Was that a walnut or a part of a tree? Probably one of the pumpkin trees. <laughs> it's a watermelon tree. <laughs> I should have opened this up more, you know? <laughs> I've been more efficient if I opened oh. it up more. The sticky well, bandits. Can I tell you, the other one's gonna have to spin. All right, call the concrete truck. I just mean, we wanna make sure- oh. we have Got two pair of safety glasses here. here. Slow but steady on these gate posts. This is a uh, little bit of a departure from our normal videos where we take machinery and just push stuff around got to kind of be a little more precise with these so our current debacle which is a good one actually versus the alternative is that our posts are just a smidge too far apart so we're cleaning up the holes to tighten things up Chris is cutting away the sidewall a little bit there yeah maybe the po where the post itself sits in the hole has got plenty of room There you go, for all your hard work. I think this one's pretty solid. Well, it's not solid, look at it. It's got two by fours on it, but you know what I mean. Did you see that guy comment on my head crooked video? <laughs> all right, so we got everything staked out after finding some number two stone here with the stakes. We had to get a little creative. 
Uh, but now we're going to build our rebar cages. And once we have those in, we're going to basically let these things sit for a week because we don't have time this weekend for concrete yet. But um, next weekend we will. So let me walk you through where we're at. So we staked them out, put a little collar up top. We're plumbed now on, on the post. This post over here, we had to, there's a bunch of number two stone you can see sitting here. So we actually used a, a fence row stake and then kind of scabbed it there. It should work. And then this side was a little easier, but got our gravel base down there, got it all plumbed up. Gonna build a rebar cage. Uh, the gravel down there is really to keep water from standing at the bottom of the, of the hole and letting the post kind of rot in, or not rot, but letting the post kind of stand in the water and maybe corrode ultimately. There's a Harbor Freight parking lot sale the other day, so <laughs> Chris had to get a new toy because it's only 50 bucks, so why not, right? With that intent. Yeah, I mean, what the heck are we supposed to do with this piece of rebar? That was in, you know where that came from? That was in the, uh, that was in one of the dump trucks of the stuff that the construction site brought me. Serious? Yeah. Jeez. Found it with the, the Gannon. That looks awesome. That'll be long enough, right? Sure. We're real precise over here. I see a review of that on any farm life in the future. Yeah, that beats the heck out of a regular... <laughs> I'm not going to have enough rebar to do all this today, I don't think, but we'll at least get one of these cages started. Got a few runs in there. and start tying stuff together. So there's the rebar cage in hole number one. I pause while you guys all giggle because it's kind of an amateur job, but I think it'll get it done. We're gonna get fiber in our concrete too. Honestly, most of this rebar was stuff we had laying in the barn. I bought a few pieces. Uh, we'll have to get more, namely for this side, which is not done. But all in, I think we're gonna bring about six yards of concrete, so neighborhood of what twenty-five thousand pounds or so. I think that probably should hold these posts. They're gonna hold three hundred pound gates in place. More to come. All right, guys. Concrete day. Uh, Chris was over here during the week finishing up uh, the rebar cage on this post behind me. And we actually tightened up both of the holes so we'd save a little bit of concrete. Did a little bit more research between last Saturday and today and figured out that the concrete pad we were going to extend behind the column is not necessarily the right location for where the opener base might sit. So we're going to go ahead and fill it in now and we'll pour more concrete later. Let me show you what we got. Just took the leaf floor a second ago and kind of blew the leaves out of the bottom there as best I could. Funny it didn't move those walnuts. But that rebar cage looks pretty good. And there's what I was talking about. We kind of put a piece of plywood in there and backfilled with dirt. There's no need to pour concrete out to here if we're not going to have anything sitting here. So the openers might ultimately sit out somewhere here if we use the pedestal style. Or if we use the linear style, it'll just affix right to the post itself. And there's no need for this. So we'll pour that later. So there's the first hole. Or second, have you look at it. And then on this side, we did the same thing. Tightened her up. The rebar cage in there. Uh, they came out of plumb a little bit during the week. Had about three quarters of an inch of rain. So uh, they kind of settled a little bit. So I'm going to plumb them up. Magnetic post levels where it's at, guys. Good enough. I'm really far off. That post over there is a little bit wobbly, so we're gonna drive an insurance post here. Hard to stop before I completely dismantle what I'm doing here.
So that took all of about, I don't know, 12 minutes for him to unload all that. Some of that was repositioning. This one looks a little more full than the other. Uh, got some extra paper weights over here in these five gallon buckets in that form. And he did a little two, two inch or two foot square up the way as well. I'm gonna run off to the barn and grab some rebar. He suggested laying it on the inside of there, which I agree, keep that from cracking. I mean, I don't really care if it cracks a little bit. It's gonna be buried by dirt at some point, but these things are now tornado proof. Went and cut a few pieces of rebar. I'll practice on this uh, extra slab over here first. Practice. Do a lot of you guys practice just taking a piece of rebar and jamming it into some concrete? And I think that's about all I'm going to do on these to finish them up. So like I said, the back section of the concrete behind the post isn't going to be used for anything anymore. Well, I say that it might if we use the pedestal style openers and they can fit there. But um, I'm looking like they won't fit there even if we go that route. So that's why we kind of filled that in. But this front section, we're also going to put columns on both sides and run maybe like a brick wall to another column over here. So this, this will be a substructure for... A brick column at some point same with over here so tried to get that as level as i could with my amateur concrete skills but both posts are still plumb they haven't fallen over and i'd venture to say they're gonna be here for a while so i'm sure we'll shoot more videos as we go through the process of actually setting these gates and uh getting them all squared away especially when we run the electric for the openers and get the openers on them and whatnot but we're expecting, I think, three inches of rain tomorrow. So glad we got this done today. Chris said he may tarp these tonight to keep water from getting in there. But by the time it starts raining tomorrow, it'll probably be firm enough that the rainwater won't do much to it. Because after all, you can cure concrete underwater if you want, right? Appreciate you guys hanging with us while we set these gate posts. All kinds of stuff going on here at the farm. If you first found our channel, you probably thought it was all tractors. But we definitely uh, venture away from those from time to time. But I'm ready to get back to them. They're a little bit more fun than breaking your back hand digging holes like this so more to come if you guys would hit that subscribe button hit the like button come back and see us we always love when we get new subscribers and love hearing from all you guys in the comments so keep them coming see you guys next time take care oh also chris and i were joking about this the other day uh you know in the movie twister when they run into that barn with all the shrapnel which was a bad idea anyway but they they kind of take their belts and tie themselves to something so the tornado won't throw them into the sky I mean, not like the old sickle mower wouldn't hit them in the head and kill them. But um, these posts, this is where I'm going to come if we have a big tornado. I'm just going to take my belt and wrap it to these things because I don't think they're going anywhere.